The ability to capture a moment in time has been around since the 19th century. Back then, photographers would use a device that consisted of a lens that focuses the light onto a photographic plate that reacts with the focus light to mimic the subject's appearance. This was a very innovative tool that used our basic understanding of light and the physics of it to create a process that is still in use today. Despite its importance in our modern society, the photochemical process proved to be very inefficient. Later on in the 20th century, this process became digitalized and made the action of taking a photograph cheaper and more accessible. This revolutionary process can be explained using basic physics that you will hear about now. What do you want me to do with this? Look inside it. There are many differences between the modern digital camera and the film cameras of old, but whether the light is captured by the sensor or received by a photographic plate, all of the light waves that bounce around the room haphazardly need to be focused so that the image can be properly interpreted. To achieve the image that you will see through your own eyes, you will need a lens to focus the light. A lens is a piece of transparent material, usually glass, that is formed and bent in such a way that it bends the light so that the light coming from your subject is focused onto the points of the sensor where you would expect the object to be. The lens bends the infinite amount of light waves coming at it from all over the place onto their organized respective points on the image sensor. The only difference between the image you see through your eyes and the image projected onto the sensor is that the projected image is flipped upside down because of the way that the curved glass bends the light. Are you guys keeping up? I still don't get it. The focus of today's informational video is the modern digital camera, not the film camera that we discussed earlier. The word digital simply means that something is made from tiny little separate somethings. Analog is the opposite of digital which means continuous. For example, the analog clock that you see on the wall uses gears that constantly rotate. They continuously measure the passage of time. A digital way of telling time is shown through an hourglass. Tiny, individual particles quickly but separately fall into a pile to measure the passage of time digitally. The sensor of the digital camera works in the same way. The sensor consists of tiny, individual pixels that each capture light and interpret them into basic electrical signals called bits, the ones and zeros of binary code. When the light hits the sensor, each pixel is electrically charged by the energy of the light. This interprets the image's brightness, which shows a black and white version of the image. The color in the image is shown when the camera layers the image on top of itself three times. One time with the picture run through a red filter, another time with the picture run through a green filter, and another one with a blue filter. This is known as RGB. This method of interpreting color from a black and white photo works because each representative wavelength comes together to form white lights in the places where they intersect with each other. The other colors in between the wavelengths of RGB are created by combining red and green to create yellow, green and blue to create cyan, and red and blue to create magenta. The invention of the digital camera has paved the way for many technological advancements in our modern society, despite the fact that the basics of the device can be easily described with basic physics. Here's a fun little fact. Because these cameras use the fantastic digital sensors rather than reels upon reels of film, digital cameras are cheaper in the long run. It leaves you with extra money to do this. Or... Aren't digital cameras fantastic? <laughs>